couple of mean monthly temperature, and we're going to try and do this one together as a class. And we're going to focus on the example set of Shanghai, China. Ch Shanghai, Shanghai. All right. So these are pretty big numbers here. They're already out on your PDF. So 45 degrees in January, 47 degrees in February, and then you'll continue on and see we have shown out here 12 months, and we're changing the trig function to be a cosine, not a sine. Remember, cosine and sine is just a phase shift, but they have the same properties. All right, what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and graph these ordered pairs. So I've set up the xy plane. The horizontal axis represents the months. The, uh, horizon, uh, the vertical axis represents the temperature. All right. So the values that we're working with, it looks like the lowest number is 45 and the highest number is 88. Do you agree with that? So we'll kind of go by... Maybe here's 40, 45, 50, well, maybe you should go by 10. Stretch up a little bit. So we've set up our vertical axes. Our horizontal axes will be our months. So you can either number them, or you could say January, February, March, April, whatever you choose. I'm going to just choose um, a number. So first month is January, second month is February, and continue on. Now we're going to go ahead and graph our ordered pairs. So I'm going to just up here write these numbers so I don't lose them. All right. So in January, there's 45 degrees. February, 47. March, 54. April 65, May 74, July 88, or 81, August 88. These start the same, and we'll just continue on. Does that look like a trig function? Rises up, comes back down. And probably the next year, it'll rise back up and fall back down. All right, so since we asked you to do a cosine function, y equals the cosine of x. Remember, we have to find the a, b, c, and d. So for a cosine function, you remember the cosine starts at the top of the amplitude. So we're going to figure out where is the top at? What months are the top temperatures? Between July and August, right? So right in here is the top. And this will be the start of our revolution. So we're going to start our first revolution and then continue there. So this will be our starting point. Where that happens on the vertical axis is at 88 degrees. 
on the horizontal axes, it's at seven and a half months. <clears throat> so do we know one of the things, the A, B, C, or D at all right now? Do we know any of those from what we just found? What does the seven and a half months represent? It's the phase shift. It's the starting point to your trig functions graph. Then we're having a phase shift to the right seven and a half months. So this will be our C later on. Give you a little time to finish that up. All right, now we're going to go ahead and find the A, B, C, and D on the next slide. So the first thing you want to do is find the amplitude. So if you remember from the first example, to find the amplitude, you want to find the maximum temperature, subtract it from the minimum temperature, and divide it by 2. So maximum minus minimum, and divide it by 2. So let's go find that. What's our maximum temperature? 88. And what's our minimum temperature? 45, right? Go ahead and do that. 88 minus 45, and then divide that by 2. That'll give us our amplitude. Now when we're done, we get 21.5. So this will be our A value in our equation. Now that A value could be positive or negative depending if we write it as a reflection. But since we're starting at the top of the amplitude, we don't have a reflection. So it will be an A, it will be positive. The next thing you want to do is find the period. The length of one revolution. And for any sine or cosine function to find the period, it's 2 pi over b. So let's talk about, back on our graph, how long does it take for one revolution? So in this case, if we go to start at the bottom, come up, and go back down, what was, how long did it take one revolution? 12 months, okay? So it sounds familiar to the last problem. I didn't try to change it too much. So the length of one revolution is 12 months. So now we're going to go ahead and solve this like we did in the first example. We're going to show it out. So our P is 12 months. So we're going to solve this for B. So how do you solve this for B? Times both sides by b, so yep, so you'll have 12b equals 2 pi, and then what? Divide by 12, yep. And then we divide 2 and 12 by 2, and we get pi over 6. So now we found our next piece, our b. find the phase shift. And that we kind of already identified on that first slide. If you head back to here, this slide, 88 degrees was our top. And what months happened is right between the seven and eight months. So you can add them up and divide by two. So we're moving to the right seven and a half units. So it's right seven and a half months. So will our C be positive or negative? Negative, right? All right. Our vertical shift. How far did we move up from the original horizontal axis of zero? So it's very similar to the amplitude equation, but instead of subtracting, what are we going to do? Add 
add them. Yep. So we're going to take the maximum plus the minimum and divide by 2 to find the middle between the high and the low. So we remember our, our maximum temperature was 88 degrees. Our minimum temperature was 45 degrees. We divide it by 2 and we get 66.5. So we've moved up on the horizontal axis 66.5 degrees up. So D equals 66.5. So if I go back to this slide here, and I want to create my horizontal axis, That would be my 66.5. My amplitude is this distance. Our phase shift was right 7.5 months. Now we're going to go ahead and collect everything into our cosine function. Remember our cosine function, y equals a cosine, we found all of our pieces now, right? So what was our a value, our amplitude? 21.5, no reflection since we started at the top of the amp. Our b value was pi over 6. And then we moved right seven and a half months. And then we moved up 66.5 degrees. And that is our trig function for this 